Hare Krishna, glory to Prabhupada, my obeisances, one chikopa to Vishya, and for two to Vishya. Itanam Pavane Dio Vaishnava Yoda Mahona Maha. So it was suggested <coughs> through the emails that I uh, speak on the seventh chapter of Chaitanya Charita, the five teachers of Lord Chaitanya. Of course, that's a whole chapter. I'm not exactly sure if there is a particular part of the chapter you want me to speak about or just a general overview of the whole chapter. So um, yeah, a little insight would give me a little focus on where to begin. I could speak generally, but uh, if that mm, you do have maybe some idea on what you want to emphasize in that chapter. Uh, Maharaj, uh, <clears throat> as you wish, Maharaj, we can go ahead. Only my our request is that if you refer some verses from the chapter, we'll be highly grateful because Chaitanya Chaitanya verses, be it Sanskrit, be it uh, Bengali, is very, very sweet. So if you refer some verses and Bishnu Prabhu will skin share, uh, do the skin sharing. So whatever the number you will tell, Bishnu Prabhu will uh, share the screen, uh, Maharaj. Okay, go to the seventh chapter, of course, verse number six, I think, would be a starting point. <laughs> yes, yes. Bishnu Prabhu, please go ahead. Uh, verse number uh, six, famous verse. Sure, sure, Prabhuji, one second. Mm. Pancha Atma Kam Krishnam. Okay. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vindam Anchitakram Bakam Krishna Bhakti Translation. Let me offer my obeisances unto Lord Sri Krishna, who has manifested himself in five as a devotee, an expansion of a devotee, incarnation of the devotee, your devotee and devotional energy. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Sri Nityananda Prabhu is the immediate expansion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as his brother. <clears throat> he is the personified spiritual bliss of Sat Chit Ananda Vigraha. His body is transcendental and full of ecstasy and devotional service. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is therefore called Bhakta Rupa, the form of a devotee. And Sri Nityananda Prabhu is called Bhakta Swarupa, the expansion of a devotee. Sri Advaita Prabhu, the incarnation of devotee, is Vishnu Tattva and belongs to the same category. There are often different types of bhaktas or devotees on the platform of neutrality, servitude, friendship, parental, parenthood, and conjugal love. <clears throat> Devotees like Sri Damodar, Sri Gadadhar, Sri Ramananda are different energies. This confirms the Vedic sutra Parashya Shakti Vivahaya Suryate. All of these bhakti subjects taken together constitute Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself. Omagyanta Miranda Syagyana Jinas Balakaya Chaksun Malitanyena Tasmai Sri Gadavin Maha. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makshi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudamani Pachadine Nir Visesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya Desatayane Vansha Kalpa Thiru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pae Pacha Ditanam Padane Jo Vaishnave Vyona Mahona Maha um, um, 
Ajanu lambita bujo kanakama dado san kirta naipakita ro kamalaya takso vishwam maro vijaparo yudharma falo one day jagatya karo karuna avataro one day shri krishna chaitanya nityanando sano dido garo daya pushpan banto chitta sando tamo nudo Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhulit Ananda Shri Advaita Gadar Har Shivasani Or Vapravindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama So sometimes there is a class of people who say that uh, you know we are all God, but we have forgotten, they're called the Mayavadis, they have that philosophy. But here in this verse is established who is actually the supreme and the manifestations of the energies that emanate from the supreme are in the same category as the supreme. For instance, as it's mentioned here, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Bhakti Rupa. He, uh, although he is the supreme personality of Godhead, he manifests himself as the form of a devotee. Uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nohi Anya. Radha and Krishna have become one in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. Sri Krishna Chaitanya uh, is the Supreme Personality of God had been mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam and in many other scriptures, even in the Mahabharata and many of the Puranas. He'll illustrate his different characteristics, his descent into this material world and his activities in the material world, all predicted by the Shastras as the appearance of the Supreme Lord in this age the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he has the internal mood of a devotee of the Lord. So it's the most mysterious incarnation that one can possibly uh, uh, come in contact with because it, it is so difficult to figure out who and what is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is Krishna, but he is in a devotee. He's in the mood of a devotee to himself. He is the Supreme Lord. He's playing the role of a devotee of himself in order to taste what it's like for being a pure devotee to himself. In the um, Chaitanya Mangala, is written by Lochan Das Thakur, one of the authors of the biographies of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are three three accepted biographers. One is, of course, Vrindavan Das Thakur, who is considered the father of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. And he did, of course, um, his book was originally called Chaitanya from um, Mongola, but then he changed it to Chaitanya Bhagavat when there was, when he, and then when uh, Lochan Das Thakur wrote his Chaitanya Mongola, and then Vrindavan Das Thakur changed the name of his biography to Chaitanya, Ch uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat. And then of course we have Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and Lochan Das and his biography of Lord Chaitanya, which is more of a summation of the life of Lord Chaitanya, not so much elaborate descriptions that are included in the other two uh, authorized biographies of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in this Chaitanya Mangala, there is an interesting statement where it, it mentions one particular incident when the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna himself, who was also known as Dwarkadish, that is, a, he is the, uh, the king of Dwarka. Uh, he is the best of all persons in Dwarka. 
and he is in the mood of opulence. He is Krishna himself. He left Vrindavan, he came to Dwarka, and now he's playing the role of a king with 16,108 queens. Um, in that setting, there is one particular incident where it mentions that uh, Rukmini, his principal queen, and Krishna has many queens, but Rukmini is considered to be the principal one. Uh, she is an expansion of one of the gopis of Vrindavan known as um, um, Chandra Rali. Uh, there are other queens such as Satya Bama, who is an expansion of Shimati Radharani. And all of the gopis manifested themselves as expansions in Dwarka to associate with Krishna in that mood of opulence. Madhuri, no, not Madhurya Ras, but in uh, Aishwarya Bhav. Aishwarya means grand opulence. So there is one incident mentions that Krishna is with his principal queen Rukmini and she is very lovingly massaging his feet. And uh, while she's performing this service to the Lord, she's becoming overwhelmed with emotion. And her emotions start to really start to pour out in the form of her words. At one point, she says, my dear Lord, you don't know how wonderful you are. So she's glorifying Krishna in that way. And she's feeling this loving emotion. And then she continues to say the same thing over and over. And then she finally says, even you don't know how wonderful you are. <laughs> and then she goes on to say, but there is one person in all of existence that knows how wonderful you are. Even you don't know your own glories. Only this person knows. And who is that Srimati Radharani? So when Krishna, Arkadesh, the supreme king was in the, the mood of opulence in Dwarka. He's reflecting on this. And he's thinking, I don't even know how wonderful I am, but there is one person who does. And so he wants to become that person so he can taste what she's tasting in relationship to him. So this is the manifestation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He comes to taste her love for him in the role of her. He take he is still Krishna. In, he's not other than uh, Krishna in Chaitanya in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he takes on her bhav or her love her mood, and uh, he also adopts her color. She is Gorangi. Anga means limbs, and, and therefore her limbs are golden. She is called Gorangi. Tapta Kancha Nagodangi Radhe Vrindavane Swati. Rishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Kriye. She is most dear to Krishna. She is the topmost of all lovers of Krishna. And she knows Krishna better than he knows himself. <laughs> That's how complete her love is. And uh, in her mood, in his mood as her, he also takes on her color. He is called Goranga. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name is Goranga. We chant the name of Goranga sometimes. We say over and over, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga. Indicating in Gora means golden and Anga means limbs. His limbs are golden, which is exactly the same color as Srimati Radharani. So in that mood, it's mentioned that he manifests himself in this material world 
has the internal energy in his internal mood of understanding himself to one three principles to taste the happiness that she's experiencing in her love for him what is the quality of that love what is the nature of that love and what is it about him that attracts her so much so these are the internal reasons why the Lord manifests himself in this particular age as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It says that when the Dwaita Charya was, uh, had previously invented before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he called the Lord to come into the material world to save the conditioned souls who are so much entangled and confused by wrong philosophies. This in the, in the area of Navadweep, where the Lord appeared, was the bastion of learning throughout all of the continent of India at that time. The greatest scholars, the greatest uh, scriptures were found in Navadweep at the time. And uh, Advaita Charya was seeing that although all of this knowledge was there, hardly anyone was actually a, a sincere devotee of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Most were worshiping demigods or were worshiping manifestations of the demigods in, in different forms, such as Durga Devi and Dinesh, Chandi, there's a whole list of many of the principal demigods, you know, Surya, um, Chandra, you know, so many demigods, Vayu, Varuna, Indra. And so people were interested in improving their material situation. So Krishna worship took a back seat at best, hardly any devotees at the time, but Advaita Charya was there. And he thought, I would like to, you know, bring these people to the right consciousness, because he is also the Supreme Personality of God, as is mentioned here in this verse. He is on the same platform. He is also Vishnu Tattva. He is also an an expansion of, Shri, of Krishna in the form of Mahavishnu. He is actually Mahavishnu who is expanded in the form of Advaita Charya. So he's come in, as a compassionate manifestation, incarnation of a devotee, in order to bring people back to the proper consciousness, which is Krishna consciousness, devotional consciousness. And so he's feeling anxiety that people are not accepting Krishna consciousness. He is also a manifestation of Sada Shiva. He is two in one. He is um, Sada Shiva and um, um, Mahavishnu in one manifestation. And in his mood of Shiva, he was thinking, oh, the, I should just take out my chakra and just, you know, just finish them all off. But actually, no, this is the work of the Supreme Lord. So he went down to the banks of the Ganga and established a little temple. And he uh, secured Shalagram Shiva. And he started to worship the Shalagram Shiva with tosi leaves and the wood face and allows calling the Lord to please come and manifest in this material world and you know and bring your sanctity movement. So that was the other reason why the Lord appeared because of the desire of Advaita Charya and of course to enunciate the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Go Lokira, Premadan Harinam Sankirtan. 
this, this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is coming from the spiritual world. It's not manifested in this material world. It, it manifests in the hearts of the pure devotee who take that mantra and spread it everywhere for the benefit of the entire world. So Lord Chaitanya's appearance is in two categories, internal reasons and external reasons. So the three internal reasons we mentioned, that was Radharani's bhav towards Krishna, and the external reasons, the uh, Dwaitas desire for the Lord to appear, the, 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 uh, the manifestation of the Yuga Dharma, which is chanting of the holy names of the Lord, um, and the Krishna Varnam, Tusa Krishna, Sangupanga Saparshadam, Yagyai, Sankirtanai, Prayai, Yajanti, Sumedha Sudha. The Lord manifested himself in order to inaugurate the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And the third external reason is to push back the effects of Kali Yuga in the form of irreligious principles which were being manifested. And those persons who manifest those irreligious principles, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Sya Gyaganir Bhavati Bharata, Abhutanam Adharma Sya, Hidatmaham Srijamiyaham, Pavitranayam Sadhanam, Vanasanaya Chaduskritam, Dharma Samstapanartaya, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. So, Pravitranaya Sadhuram, Vanasanaya Saduskritam, is that to reestablish religious principles and to remove the demonic influence in the world. So, the Lord comes in millennium and after millennium in order to do that work. But in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he manifested his work in the form of the Sankirtan movement and the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So these are the three external and the three internal reasons, but it explains that when the Dwaita Charya called the Lord, the Lord actually it was time, as explains in the Shastras, in Chaitanya Charya, it was time for the Lord to experience an internal need. And internal need is actually the prime reason for the Lord's appearance. The chanting of the Holy Name and the destroying of the demons were secondary. Sometimes we think it is mentioned that the chanting of the holy name was the most important, was the reason why the Lord came. It is true. But that was secondary to his own reasons to experience his mood of devotion to himself in the form of his own devotee, pure devotee, Srimati Radharani. So these five, Dvaita, Chaitanya, Nityananda, Gadadhar and Srivas make up what is called the absolute truth. Bhakta Rupa, Bhakta Swarupa, Bhakta Avatar, Bhakta Kyam, and Bhakti Shakti. These are the five. Uh, the three, the first three, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, and the Dvaita, Vishnu Tattva. They are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Gadadhar is Shakti Tattva. He is the internal energy of the Lord manifested. And uh, Shivas is Jiva. He is actually uh, Narada Muni who has appeared as one of the manifestations. So the absolute truth contains all of these five categories. The absolute truth is not just one category. There are different categories, but they're all on the spiritual platform. Therefore, in one sense, they are one. But in another sense, they, that oneness has taken a form of variety in order to execute the mission of the Lord. And it says here, there are different types of devotees who worship the Lord accordingly. We have the five Rasas, 
Ras is, is translated into the word English word it means mellow. Mellow is a very regular word. It needs further description in order to understand it. It means ultimately that there is a mood of loving relationships. But the foundation to all loving relationships with the Supreme Lord is the principle of servitorship. So although there are five categories, neutrality, servitude, friendship, parentalhood, mm -hmm. and conjugal love, they all of the principles center around serving the Lord in a particular mood or mellow. And uh, it says that every living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Lord Jivar Sarupaiks and Krishna and Nityadas. And those living entities all have a particular, what we say, um, internal mood that is indigenous to their own nature. So we are either in our in the spiritual world, we are in one of these five relationships, mostly either in in neutrality Neutrality is also there. That is a lot lesser. Extent. So now it says that these five, they came, when did they come? Um, they come, they came to spread the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And so, and before they actually spread the holy names of the Lord, there, they were tasting the sweetness of that chanting themselves. And um, it mentions that that taste was so sweet that they just wanted to distribute it to everyone and anyone. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, in another part of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, I think it it's in the same Adi Lila in the ninth chapter, he says that the truth the love of God is like a gigantic storehouse. And there's so much fruits and there's a variety of fruits. And that fruit is very sweet and very tasty. And then the Lord goes on and says that I am also tasting that sweet fruit and is very, very relishable. But I want to distribute this fruit to anyone and everyone and everywhere. But I am only one person. So the Lord takes the role of a very humble, because he's in the role of a devotee. And he says, I am only one person. And therefore, um, I need some help. So he calls out, and these are a series of verses, to his devotees, please come forward and assist me in distributing these fruits. First taste these fruits yourself. They're very sweet and tasty. And all of your problems will go. All of your desires for happiness will be fu completely fulfilled. And now take those fruits and distribute it to anyone and everyone. So the worship of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the foundation by which we worship the Supreme Lord in this age. No one can approach Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan without the mercy of Mahaprabhu. Um, he, he has manifested himself in that way in this age because in previous ages, no one could actually come to the level of worshiping Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan and perfecting their lives. It's such an exclusive level of bhakti, very few can attain to the level of the Rindavan mood. But Mahaprabhu, as he says, I have broken open the storehouse of love of God and distributing these fruits. So he's actually opened the door to, to, to Goloka Vrindav, Krishna's inter, most intimate pastimes with his devotees in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And in order to taste those one has to worship the Lord in his in, in his manifestation as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what is that worship? That worship is actually um, chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, serving the Vaishnavas, 
and distributing that same mercy to others. Bhakti Vinod Thakur manifests these principles in his, one of his songs, and he describes it, he calls it Namaruchi Vaishnav Seva Jiva Doya. Jiva means entity, Doya means mercy. Showing mercy to the living entities by introducing them to the process of pure devotion and service. And Mahaprabhu has not discriminated about who is qualified and who is unqualified. This is the this is why he is called Namo Mahavandanaya Krishna Prema Padaya Tem Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namadi Golda Tristana Maha. He is he is so kind, so merciful. He is uh, making the highest available to everyone and anyone simply by, simply by this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So that is his uh, uh, unique function in the manifestations of the different incarnations of the Lord. The Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not an incarnation. He is Krishna himself. But he, he appears to be an incarnation for the sake of understanding. But actually, he is avatari. That means he is the source of all other avatars because he is the absolute truth in one. Therefore, he is the root of Vrindavan Dham because he is Radha and Krishna in one. And he is making that realm of devotion, which is impossible to approach. Even in the other ages, when Krishna manifested himself in his different incarnations, he hardly spoke about or even directed people towards um, Vrindavan. It was all about Vaikuntha, the different incarnations of the Lord in the different ages. It was all centered around achieving Vaikuntha. Only when he comes as Krishna, and then when he appears as Krishna, right after that, Mahaprabhu appears. But even when Krishna was here, very few could actually achieve that realm of Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu is Namo Maha Vandanaya. He is so kind, so merciful, that he's making it available to anyone and everyone if we follow these three principles. Nam Ruchi means not only to chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but to develop a sweet taste for that chanting. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is Krishna himself in sound. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Punya Sudya Nitri Mukta Abhinna Tvam Nami Nami No. So he is Krishna himself in the mood of his own devotee, and he, he is, um, but still, the chanting of the Holy Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is available to anyone and everyone, and it's Krishna himself, there's no doubt. Nama and Nami are the same. He who is named, and he who is being named, is the same. The name, and he who is named, is the same. So those who are actually serious in their practice of devotional service will develop a attraction for chanting more and more and more. So we have kirtan and we have japa. Both of those manifestations of glorification of the Lord are essential in order to bring about the consciousness of pure devotion. One has to chant Japa. Mm -hmm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, awesome. Chant the Japa. There are displays of chanting, holding Japa and chanting. In fact, Lord Chaitanya would always chant his rounds also every day. How many rounds he chanted, it wasn't really mentioned, but I, I believe he chanted at least one lakh of names every day, and that means at least. 100,000, that means 64 rounds a day. 
but he was also preaching and traveling everywhere and anywhere and spreading the, the Sankirtan movement. It mentions in, uh, in the uh, in, in Bhakti Vinoda courses, he sings. Udilu Maruna Kodana Bhadi Dwijamani Goda Amani Jag Tatari Tatari Bhaji Loko Gana Gana Maji Agnizaro. He sings and he, he leaves the place early in the morning along with some of his intimate associates. They go through the village chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, mantra, waking up everyone, get up. You've been sleeping too long. You're wasting your life and sleeping and during the day and night you're sleeping and during the day you're simply decorating your dead bodies. Uh, Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord, has come with the medicine for all ills. Enechi Asari Maya, Nasi Bado Magi, Hari Nama Maha Mantra, Lao Tumi Magi. And there is so, in this age of COVID, so many, many problems. Uh, problems on national levels, international levels, communal levels, uh, social levels, uh, family levels. And even in our own minds and bodies, we have so many problems. It's just Kali Yuga, just an ocean of faults. Kaler Dosha Nidhi Rajan. It is an ocean of unlimited faults. But um, Asti Echo Mahagun, what is that echo? That one? It's a Mahagun. Gun means benediction, Maha means great. What is that great dictum? Kirtana Eva Krishna Syas Mukta Sangam Param Bajam. Chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra simply drives away the effects of Kali Yuga and establishes the mood of Satya Yuga in the hearts and the minds of the devotees who take up this chanting in a very, very serious and very regular way. So Mahaprabhu emphasized that is the most important thing and association with and service to the Vaishnavas. One who serves the Vaishnavas or looks for opportunity as much as they can to serve the Vaishnavas becomes very dear to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Vaishnava Seva means association with and service to the devotees. And this will help establish our taste for chanting the holy name. If we don't put Vaishnav Seva first, then chanting will never really develop to a level of satisfaction. Uh, we are not budget and nandi. We can just sit in our little room, chant Hare Krishna, and read books and expect to make advancement. This is the, this is for those who are on the highest platform of spiritual and have gone through all of the other stages of bhakti and have reached pure love of God. But for us, we have to associate with and serve the Vaishnavas and engage in practical devotional activity. And so Vaishnav Seva is the foundation by which chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra expands itself more and more into the heart of the devotee. And the last one is Jiva Doya. Sometimes we use a very simplified way to describe that, that Jiva Doya simply means to preach Krishna consciousness. But it's more than just preaching, it means reaching out to others who are in a less fortunate situation and trying to attract them to the process of Harinam and devotional activity. So these three are the essential mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, in another aspect of his existence is that as he was here, he was also exhibiting various ecstasies in the process of chanting. In the later part of his life, 
He retired to Jagannath Puri. Of course, he was preaching there, but towards the later part of his life, while he was in Jagannath Puri, he was going into deep ecstasies of Radharani's love for Krishna within himself. That's nicely described by Krishna Das Kaviva Goswami in the nectar devotion, mostly in the later part of Madhya Leela and in, throughout most of uh, Ancha Leela, his uh, ecstasy. So in that last part of his life, uh, he was more in the internal mood of his own devotion to himself. So Mahaprabhu is a great mystery in terms of to try to understand what is his nature, what is his position. But we know one thing, and this is the most important thing, he is the uh, Namo Maha Bhagavanaya. He's the most magnanimous, the most merciful manifestation of Krishna. When Krishna was here, he said, Sarva Dharma Pradikshit Jam, Mam me kam saranam bhajam aham tom sarapate vyo moksa yashyami masu chaha. He said, abandon all of your ideas on how you can make uh, progress in spiritual life. Just surrender to me. I'll give you protection. I'll free you from all anxiety if you simply surrender to me. Uh, but Krishna made it quite direct. And therefore, later on, it says that Krishna reflected on what he had said. And he saw that very few, hardly any, were actually surrendering to him. So it says he manifested himself in a more easily available manifestation of himself. And that is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who doesn't say, you know, surrender to me. He says, simply, you take this chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. When you feel happy, dance. And take only food steps offered to the Lord in devotion, Krishna Prashadam. And read some books on philosophy. And, you know, engage in a very simple but very direct process of serving Krishna. By serving the Lord's devotees, especially his pure devotee, spiritual master. So the process, as Prabhupada says, is very simple, but it requires determination in order to stay fixed in the process of devotional service and make progress ultimately to the goal of pure love of God, which is the only goal in devotional service. So these are some little bit of points in the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are many stories that illustrate his preaching. In fact, we can go through practically each one of his pastimes and there's a very clear and very powerful message in each one of these pastimes. <clears throat> when the Lord was traveling in South India, he went to Kormashetra uh, and he stopped at the house of one Brahmana was known as the Korma Brahmana. Korma Brahmana was a very Hakka Brahman, first class, beautiful family, very devoted. Everything was aligned in, in his household with devotional life. And therefore the Lord accepted the Korma Brahman's invitation to stay at his house. And he did for four days. And during those four days, the whole family served the Lord completely, taking care of all of his personal needs and hearing from him about the glories of pure devotion and service. After four days, the Lord decided to continue on with his journey. So he left. And while he was leaving, the Lord noticed that behind him was the Korma Brahman coming along. The Lord stopped and said, where are you going? He said, I'm going with you. No, you cannot do that. You have your family. You have your responsibility. But the Korma Brahma didn't want to hear that. So finally, the Lord said, actually, if you want to associate with me, 
then uh, you preach Christian consciousness. He said, by my command, be guru, save the land. So what was he saying? He said that you stay in your role as a grihasta and whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Whoever you meet, teach them to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. If you do that, you will always have my association. We will never be separated. And we will also meet again. So the Lord gave the formula that one doesn't have to change their particular status within the society. One simply has to uh, take the Lord's mercy, which one has received by the grace of one's own spiritual master, and distribute that mercy to others accordingly. And if one does that, then uh, one can always associate with the Supreme Lord in devotion. The Lord will be experienced through the service of preaching, Krishna consciousness, reaching out to others, because the Lord personally comes to uplift the fallen conditioned souls. And therefore, anyone who is assisting the Lord in his own mission becomes very dear to the Lord. And then it says that that person is pretty much guaranteed to again return to the spiritual world at the end of life. Now the Lord has given the formula, follow these three principles, taste the chanting of the holy names, associate in service with devotees, and reach out to the fallen souls in whatever way you can, according to your particular position in society. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if we can go into questions. Yes, participants are requested to ask questions if you have any query. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. So, if you have any query, participants, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, uh, Maharaj, I have a question regarding that, you know, Shaligram Shila, where, you know, Shri Advaita Chare offered tulsi leaves and, you know, offered prayers to for many manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I just want to ask you a question. This is regarding a impersonalism and personalism that I'm talking about. See, in Bhagavad Gita, it is mentioned, I mean, Lord Krishna had himself proclaimed that, you know, I prefer, you know, you know, the uh, personi, I mean, the, uh, see, not, not an impersonal form, not an impersonal form, rather, I mean, if you offer me prayers in the form of some in person, see, in in, uh, I would say I'm not able to explain it. See, he doesn't prefer impersonal worship, impersonalism mm -hmm. over personalism. So here, by offering by offering prayers to Shaligram, Sheila, Advaita Charya is not, you know, somehow encouraging impersonalism in some case, in any case. Yeah. That is my question. No, he's in the, the telegram seal is a manifestation of the Lord in that particular form. The Lord appears in the Himalayas in the Gandaki River in the form of these telegram sealers. Just like we have the Radharandidi in, uh, in Vrindavan. And so that Radharandidi was originally a telegram sealer. And he was found in the Gandaki River by Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who brought it back to Vrindavan and started worshiping it. Gopal Bhatta Goswami wanted to worship the Lord in his transcendental form as Krishna. So he prayed. And by the power of his own prayer, that Shalagram manifested the form of uh, what we know today as Radha Raman. If you go to the Radha Raman temple. And um, you can even see, I don't know if you can see, but the Pajaris know that on the back of the deity, still part of the Shaligram is still there. The Dora expanded himself. So that Shaligram is known differently. 
and Krishna in his personal form that is not in person. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I, I had a confusion which has been cleared. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, I have, I have a query, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I quote uh, uh, from this uh, chapter, then I ask you a question. Uh, Patro patro bichar nahi nahi sthana sthan jai jaha pai taha kore prem dan lutiya khaiya diya bhandar ujare asya jo bhandar prem sotogune bare uchilo prema bonna chotudike berai stri vritho balog juba shavare dubai shodjon durjon pongu joro ondogon prema bonna dubai la jogotero jon so here actually I am quoting from this chapter. My query is that Maharaj, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so merciful as we have already told, so magnanimous Mahabadan Naya. But somehow I feel that I am not getting that nectar, Maharaj. So where I am uh, slipping down, falling down, Maharaj. That is my query. <laughs> <laughs> where I am not getting that nectar. So much, so much flood of love around. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we mentioned where the nectar is to be found. It's in the chanting of the holy name. It's in association with and service in the Vaishnava. Extending ourselves out to make some sacrifice to bring others into Krishna consciousness. These are also... And also giving up the idea. You know, so Lord Chaitanya also makes one other thing. He says, I give my full mercy to anyone, to everyone who chants the holy names of the Lord and does not find fault with others. He calls dosha darshi. Dosha means false and darshi means to see. A dosha darshi means one who does not see the faults of others. And so Mahaprabhu made that a, a principle that if you want to get his full mercy, then it has to come to that platform of acting without finding fault with anyone. <laughs> um, that is a dosha darshi. Uh, so that's another principle. We didn't mention that, but that is also a foundational principle of, of receiving the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. But maybe we need to go into the temple and chant and dance more and <laughs> sponsor the Sunday feasts or <laughs> do more seva. The more seva we can do, the more we attract the uh, attention of the Lord. If we do it in the mood of pleasing the Lord. But the essence of Lord Chaitanya's mission is centered around Chanting and chanting and dancing. We are not simply armchair scholars. We have so many books and we discuss books all day. No, we're out there singing and dancing, taking prasadam, associating with devotees. That's where the taste comes. Uh -huh. Books, books give you an insight of the direction by which you should understand everything. But simply, simply Reading books and studying books makes us gyanis. We want to become bhaktas. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this means can't dance, <laughs> take prasadam, associate with devotees, go to the festivals, find ways to uh, serve the Lord in different ways. That's okay. Our... Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just like we're now we're in the middle of a big festival in uh, in uh, Mayapur. So I'm here in Mayapur right now. And the devotees are doing, you know, this is, we're in the middle of the Kirtan Mela. So I was there last night. And the temple was so full. It was incredible. There were thousands and thousands of devotees there. And, uh, you know, this is going on 12 hours a day, every day. <laughs> for five days in a row. So why do we do this? Because we want to emphasize Lord Chaitanya's movement to chant and dance mm -hmm. continuously for five days for 12 hours every day. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then you can get a, you'll get a taste. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And Maharaj, you talked about the determination and one of your class very recently, a few weeks back, you told that our determination is weakened by our sex desire. So uh, till the last breath, we know that our you know body concept and we uh, continue that desire. So how to get out of that desire so that our determination will be stronger and stronger day by day. Hmm. Well, um, let's mention uh, how to reduce that is uh, eat simply. <laughs> don't eat as extravagantly. Don't you know, <laughs> don't okay. Thank you. Very palatable dinners because they excite the uh, they excite the passionate nature within the mind and the senses. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was also saying that you know we have to eat simple foods. Once in a while, we take a little bit of something nice, that, but if you eat simply, you'll be healthy and you won't be so much inclined to uh, you know the mood of passion. Uh, don't eat big prasadams at late night. This is one of the things that I see people that have big feasts at night. One of them. This is one way to crash your bhakti fast. Mm -hmm. Eating big feasts at night. Um, get up early. <laughs> We're supposed yes, to mother. Get up an hour and a half before the Brahma Mohorta hour. Uh, if we get up at six or seven o'clock, that's, I mean, the whole day is wasted. Yes, mm -hmm. Maharaj. Yeah, I get up at 3.30, 4 o'clock, 4.30, even 5 o'clock. That's late, too. Get up early, check your rounds, go to the temple, associate with the devotees. Morning program will give us a nice taste. And... Uh, we should also read about, you know, what, uh, what is this, what is sex desire? It is the same energy that is the basis of the living entity's love for Krishna. Mm. It's called adiras. It's that energy that is directed towards Krishna in a loving way. When that same energy becomes diverted towards the material energy, towards the forms of this world, it manifests itself as attraction for the opposite sex. The same energy. It's like electricity. Electricity goes into a particular type of apparatus and it produces cooling. It goes into a, a radiator and produces heating. Yes, so that same energy, which is the energy of love of God, when it turns towards the material energy, it becomes uh, material. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, Sridhi Mataji also here. Mataji, you have any query? You ask very nice question always in the temple, Mataji. Sridhi Mataji, you have any query? Vishnu Prabhu also. Uh, Hare, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, so I have uh, I have a question like um, so similar to um, Goloka planet where um, Krishna resides. Uh, do we have a separate planet where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his pastimes are happening, and uh, that is a different planet like that? Mm, that's explained that the uh, the uh, Goloka Dam there is the place where Krishna performs his pastimes with his devotees. And there's a section of Goloka Dam which is Mahaprabhu. Same planet. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So those who are who are just like Prabodananda Saraswati, when he when he offers his prayer to the Supreme Lord, he simply rejects all other forms of the Lord. Except Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's all he wants to know. <laughs> He's fixed only on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You see, when you read his prayers, he he almost it sounds like all the other incarnations of the Lord. Uh, he doesn't want to hear about anything. He only wants to hear about Mahaprabhu and serve Mahaprabhu. So he's understood. You know, Mahaprabhu, and he understands that Mahaprabhu is Krishna. You know? So there are devotees who dedicate their whole worship 
on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they, when they reach perfection, they will also go to Goloka Dham in that section where Mahaprabhu has the Sankar. Oh, I see. Yeah, sure. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Maharaj, uh, so one uh, one last question I have is, uh, so you, you have done a lot of uh, nice work in jail preaching, right? So uh, I wanted to ask, um, so what is the um, most important things the prisoners uh, will be attracted to in Krishna consciousness? Because it's very difficult to preach in a jail. So I wanted to know how um, such kind of criminals get attracted uh, to Krishna consciousness. That's an easy answer. <laughs> the thing that works all the time, it's called Prabhupada's book. Oh, it's we, Prabhupada's books, okay. We try to send him as much books as we can. We're always sending in books either directly to the inmates or into the libraries, sometimes to the chaplains. Uh, and so we've had some results in those areas. So when people get a connected with Prabhupada's books, then they start uh, want to know more about our movement and want to hear more, so they want more books, so they want to know where, where is this philosophy coming from, who's behind it. So it's Prabhupada's books that really is the principle that opens up the preaching in the jails. I mean, one almost 100%. Because association is not so easy, it's hardly available to them. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for your nice class, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, yesterday I uh, I will. I have been initiated uh, by Bhakti Vika Swami Maharaj. So please shower your blessings uh, so that I can obey my Guru Maharaj. I can serve devotees and Shila Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada and Lord Krishna. So please give me your blessings, Maharaj. On your initiation. Congratulations. Uh, somebody's got their thing open. Okay. Congratulations on your initiation and uh, just follow the instructions of the master and everything will become and wonderful. My best wishes. Leela, Leela. I am so, so sorry. There is three person who has the microphone open. That's why it's so difficult to hear. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, well, if you're not, uh, if you're not speaking, keep your microphone closed. Okay, anyone else um, with questions, comments? So, <clears throat> so if, if uh, there is no question, so we can end the session. We say Hari Bol three times to Maharaj. So Hari Bol. Yes, 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 please go ahead, please go ahead, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada and all glories to you and all glories to sample devotees. Um, I I read and listened to Shri Prabhupada's uh, lecture, uh, and it is it's about Ajamil and his uh, his son's name and Narayana, and I also have learned that there are those who. Uh, choose the name uh, for their children, name of uh, the, uh, of the, uh, how to say, uh, the holy names. Uh, in that way, whatever, however they live, however they do, just because they say this name all the time, every day, 
it's almost like they champ. Is it true? <laughs> well, you have to be careful with that because if it's your children, if you chastise them also, like, hey, Narayan, what are you doing? You know, you know, so that might not go over so good. <laughs> so it's a cutting edge thing. You have to use it in a very careful way. But yeah, that's that is a principle that by keeping the names of the Supreme or a holy place, uh, we are again connecting with that sound vibration and there's benefit in that. There's benefit in that. That's why we get, when we take initiation, we get a name. So we are reminded <clears throat> of the nature of the Supreme through the different names, through his different associates, through the different holy places. That is the culture. Yes, Sri Devi, you have a question. But turn on your turn on your uh, microphone. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Dear Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you today for this sweet, sweet delineation of Lord Chaitanya's mercy and his magnanimity and his compassion. So we are just enchanted by the, by the narration. I have no question, but I wanted to introduce Zauri. She's from Kazakhstan and she's here uh, in Mayapur Dham. And she was listening very intently to the class and she wants to say thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you. Who is the Prabhupada? So, so Maharaj, we can end the session now if, if there is no uh, question. So we say three times Hari Bol to Maharaj. Hari Bol, Hari Bol. 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 H